Hello everybody, welcome back to Witch Fix. Today we are looking at a rather surprising book. It's called Rhymes with Witches. It's by Lauren Miracle. And although Goodreads refers to it as the second book in the Crestview series, which is a series of two books, I read it first because a load of people in the comments were like, this is the first book. Goodreads is mad. So this is, I think, the first book because it doesn't seem to rely on any prior knowledge. And it was recommended by Dan over on YouTube. So thank you, Dan. Uh, it was also included in my What Have I Been Buying video posted in February. So I went into this book not expecting it to be, you know, groundbreaking literature because it has kind of like a planned cover with weird pink glittery bits on it and a charm bracelet. It looks very teeny. It looks very chiclety. And I've been told that it was sort of like the um, private series which I've been extensively reviewing in that it's about a girl called Jane who wants to get in with the popular girls and discovers they have a dark secret. The dark secret in the private series was basically murder uh, and the dark secret in this book is, is a little bit darker and a little bit weirder so we'll get into it. I'm going to trigger one for discussions of sexual assault uh, which is also mentioned briefly in the book. Um, but I think that's about it, uh, trigger warnings wise for this novel. I'm going to try and keep this a reasonably spoiler free review because the long and the short of it is that I do heavily recommend this book. I think it's a great horror novel for teenagers and adults and it has some very interesting messages and overtones and undertones to it. It did leave me devastated for about an hour after I finished reading it. I probably should not have read it all in one go but I did. And it really kind of hits hard at the ending. It's not like a, a peppy, light-hearted end where the heroes triumph. It feels very much like the hero has, has met their end in, in some ways uh, and is now the poorer of all their experiences in the book. Uh, so that's something to be aware of. And I did find like the one negative for my review of the book would probably be the ending and I'll get more into it. Uh, later on trying to be as spoiler free as possible but we begin the book with Jane uh, Jane has one friend her name is Alicia and she's kind of a bitch um, there's no real way to put it Alicia does her down all the time wants her to come to cheerleading practice uh, to watch her like try out but is it is very negative and very mean to Jane and quite catty and Jane spends a lot of her time, even before she becomes involved with the bitches, which is what they call the clique and um, this school, uh, hiding from Alicia and not wanting to spend time with her. So you kind of get the impression that Alicia is not a very good friend. Uh, she has one other friend that who is kind of a possible love interest who's called Paul. Uh, he's just kind of a limp weed. He's... I don't know, I guess you'd probably call him a simp in that he just follows her around being nice to her and saying that she's great and kind of wanting to ask her out, but she doesn't really view him that way and has a crush on someone else. So that's unfortunate, and although he is nice to her, she isn't hugely nice to him. So I kind of wanted him to do better and like find a better friend. But there we go. Now, there's three bitches at this school. The bitches is sort of, I guess, like the plastics from Mean Girls, with one notable difference in that each member is in a different year of school. There's always four of them, a senior, a junior, a sophomore, and a freshman, I think? American school is weird. And then, obviously, they take on a new freshman every year when the senior leaves and everyone kind of moves up a notch. And I thought that was kind of an interesting idea because, spoiler alert, this book does contain witchcraft. It's not really a spoiler. but um, And these girls are involved in it. But that's an interesting way to pass it down, obviously, if you just pick a new girl. And then in four years' time, she will go through all of the ranks and then leave the school. And will have sort of initiated people behind her. Given that Jane is a freshman, she is quickly tapped to be the new member of the bitches uh, by the, the three who are currently at the school. There isn't a huge amount of personality between them. The most likable one is their most recent joiner, so like the freshman from last year, who I think is called Mary something. Uh, and then there's the two above her, Keisha the senior, and then Bitsy, who's British, and boy do you know it, because she's like, bloody hell this, and it's alright, love that, in that weird American way that they write British people. Like, she might as well be Daphne from Frasier, it's kind of cringy. Uh, but they, they fixate on Jane as being 
the one that they want and they do some tests they invite her to a party to see how she does and then they talk about how they accepted her because compared to the other candidates she has nothing going for her everyone else is either really smart or really pretty or their dad is rich they don't want it enough they don't want to be popular enough because they have other stuff to fall back on and jane has nothing which is super cruel but also accurate because jane really does have nothing so she gets inducted into this group and then comes the price and although she doesn't initially believe it uh, there is a cost to pay to being a bitch and it does feel very much like the others are trying to warn her before she signs up for this uh, particularly that the most recent girl is trying to tell her you know there's a price you have to take this seriously but jane is kind of high on her acceptance into this group and doesn't really believe the stories that she's heard um the stories being from her erstwhile best friend alicia's sister ray who used to go to the school she says that there is a legend that there was a girl called sandy who really wanted to be popular more than anything else and so made some sort of dark bargain with the devil or some other force sacrificed a cat at the school uh, and gained popularity and then died so dark dark times the high school is also infested with feral cats which some people on goodreads and i'll get into like the reviews on goodreads because they're not great um so, sort of saw this as being unrealistic that the school was infested with feral cats and yes it's weird that's kind of the point is that it's a weird thing that's happening it's unsettling that's what horror is is just something is a little bit odd here and the idea that although the school is trying to get rid of these cats you see people bringing in like traps and stuff they always come back and they're always there and people are just like dealing with it like they can't really see the problem a lot of the time they just work around it it's kind of one of those uncanny things like a village that lives on the edge of a cliff and people keep going in there and going but you're on the edge of the cliff one day you might just plunge in and the locals don't really seem aware of that danger or they have this belief that it won't happen there's something a little bit lovecraftian in that it's, it's, it's quite peculiar i liked it on to the price then it seems that the cost of the witches popularity which is all bitches you choose um is that they steal popularity from other people so once a week they have to steal an object belonging to another girl at the school they don't say it has to be a girl but they only do steal from girls so I'm not sure what that's about they have to take it to the office of a teacher called lurl the pearl who's like this weird old lady teacher who has a special band on her head to hold her glasses on her nose it's quite comical they're all given a key when they're like brought into the bitches to her office and they have to go there once a week leave a stolen thing and then after that lol will take it and they will feel like a rush of popularity that has been stolen from some other girl and it's weird how this works it's, it's kind of a cool concept like i always thought they were going to be doing like spells or rituals or initiations but this was so much creepier because you get to see Jane go through the stages of thinking this is ridiculous and then seeing that it's not and realising what she's done to someone because the person who's had their popularity stolen is suddenly like dog shit, like no one wants to be around them or look at them, they're making fun of them, bullying them, they are a toad is, is how Jane describes it, they are the lowest of the low for a week until someone else is picked and i feel like that was kind of allegorical towards like high school the whole school experience is that something will happen and for a bit someone will be hugely unpopular and then something else will happen and it, and it will be someone else's turn to be at the bottom of the heap and so that was kind of an interesting way and i think the way the author uses like allegory to sort of paint a picture of the high school experience is very successful because it is all about people using each other and feeding on each other's popularity trying to get ahead in a contest which is ultimately meaningless because you know you're only in that school for four years and then you're off out into the world where anything might happen to you spoiler alert so that's sort of where i'm going to leave my plot summary jane struggles with this thing that she's doing to other people with the bonuses of it being incredible like just people giving her stuff for free they throw her a birthday party even though it's not her birthday people are just obsessed with her 
and she struggles with the morality of it and that ends up leading into the kind of climax of the novel um which i i couldn't get through fast enough it was exciting i didn't know what was going to happen it was very unpredictable and i enjoyed it unfortunately the ending kind of lets it down a little bit because obviously jane climbs quite high in the first part of the novel and then obviously there's a fall coming for her but she doesn't seem to really recover from that by the end of the novel normally there'd be this sort of resurgence where having gained a height in the system and then seeing its downside again she would go about dismantling it and somehow triumph over evil that doesn't really happen in the book she sort of ends up at the bottom again and then just sort of makes peace with it but not in any real sense um and gets back paul as a friend and it felt unsatisfying to me i wanted to know some things that were not spelled out in the novel for example we see a video which is the tryout for last year's candidate and we see that the last year's senior in that clip a, a red-headed girl i wanted jane to find out what had happened to her once she left the school what was her life like when she was no longer presumably doing this thing where she every week gives something to the teacher you know what what becomes of her after that we find out that the teacher is unsurprisingly linked to that old story of the the girl who sacrificed everything to be popular and she's obviously now this twisted weird old lady with a band that holds her glasses up obsessed with these feral cats who seem connected to her power somehow is that the future for all of them is that something that could have been brought into the ending to show that Jane had had, in fact, a lucky escape, that she was sort of free of this devil's bargain that she had otherwise made? On the flip side, I think I would have been even happier if she'd made her own bargain and had stolen the popularity from these bitches to like reign supreme over them, even if it was kind of a hollow victory, knowing that it was just for her time at school. She needed to do something, it was my thought when I got to the end, it felt like the book just sort of stopped and Jane hadn't really done a lot to seize control of her own destiny. She had been tricked, hoodwinked, uh, blinded by popularity. She had fallen into like hubris and had sort of let herself down. Try not to give too much away, but she had brought about her own downfall and I wanted to see her recover from that and take charge of her own destiny. And it didn't really happen, which was disappointing. Uh, and probably the one thing missing from the book. Now, the reviews on Goodreads are terrible. I, I went to like put my review up there, and all of the reviews for this are like... There are a couple of three stars, they're mostly two and one star reviews, from people who loathed this book. And they specifically say that they hated the main character, and they didn't understand why you would write a book with a main character that was this horrible. And make no mistake about it, Jane is horrible. She's shallow, she's mean and cruel, and she does a lot of things throughout the book that obviously you will dislike if you're a normal human being. But that feels like it's kind of the point, because like, I forget her name, the ginger one from Mean Girls, Lindsay Lohan, what was her name in the actual film? Like Lindsay Lohan in Mean Girls, you see her turn into a monster and you start to hate her. And you know that's sort of the point she's not meant to be a likable character she's not meant to be like oh i want to be best friends with jane like you would in maybe like the wicker series or circle of three like you'd want to be friends with these girls because they're cool you sort of look at her and you're like i can see why everyone hates you and even though she becomes popular and she has everything you still hate her which is kind of one of the lessons that she learns is that when you're popular everyone might say that they like you but it's just because they want to use you for something. Just because you've magically made them worship you doesn't mean they like you. And I think that's kind of the point of the book and maybe something that people didn't grasp or didn't get on with. But that was definitely my takeaway from it. Someone else said that the book glorified sexual assault and victim blaming, which I think is just a fundamental misunderstanding of how books work. What they are referring to, I think, is something that happens in the book where a girl called Camilla, who is the lowest of the low, the least popular girl in school, is kind of sexually assaulted, well, not kind of, she is sexually assaulted by one of the football players. He pushes her up against a locker and he pinches her boob. And Jane is a witness to this, and so Camilla asks her to come with her to talk to the coach and say, 
what happened. And Jane doesn't really want to do this because she wants to be popular. She doesn't want to get involved with Camilla, who is the lowest of the low. But she kind of does anyway. And then later on, she turns her back on other things happening to Camilla and tries not to get involved. It just in the name of like preserving her popularity and, and not being dragged down with Camilla, who is drowning in high school. And a lot of people call Camilla names and things because she's having her popularity stolen a lot and everyone hates her. And they call her a slag, they call her a whore, and they say that she deserves what happens to her. That is victim blaming, and I'm not going to say it isn't. And there is sexual assault in the book, and I'm not going to say there isn't. But what I'm going to say is the book itself is not glorifying that. It's not saying this is a good thing to do. It's saying this is the monster that Jane has become. This is the awful thing that she is saying about someone who has been assaulted. It is not holding this up as behaviour to emulate. And I think that's a problem that some people have with books, is that they say, this book contains this. And you say, yes, but the context of that is very, very different. So, for example, books may have characters in them that use racist language. And that character, if that character is meant to be the hero, then obviously there's a problem there, because you're like, well... Why would the hero be racist? Why am I expected to think that this person is heroic? But if they're a bad guy in, say, like a historical novel or something, then that's obviously why that's there. It's putting these bad words that are bad things to say in the words of a bad character to show that that is what they are like. In the same way, in this book, this is victim blaming put into the mouths of characters to show that they're bad people who are in a feeding frenzy over someone who is in a lower social position than them because they feel like that person is disgusting because of the actions of other people because they've made her into this thing to be reviled and so I, I don't really understand why people would say that this book glorifies that behavior when it is that that behavior that really shows how evil they are uh, so there we have it um i did think that the book was a lot more nuanced than i thought it was going to be going in it kind of reminded me of season of the witch by Mariah Fredericks, I think, which I previously reviewed and which was also a, a book about teens discovering witchcraft. This had more like fantastical horror elements in that I really enjoyed. It kind of reminded me a little bit of Carrie, obviously by Stephen King, and a, a little bit of other things. Like there's a book that I read once called Walking Naked, which was recommended by a teen magazine a long time ago. And that is similarly about a popular girl who comes to question and look at the structure of popularity and wonder about like who it's hurting and how it serves her but at the expense of other people so it's kind of like that it's a bit mean girls it's a bit the craft but it, it's got these like really interesting quite original elements this whole bargain with the devil thing the stealing objects to give to this mysterious teacher character who may or may not be a demon it just kind of works and it's a really interesting read. I can't wait to read the next book in the series, which Goodreads erroneously informed me was the first one. It's called Bliss and it takes place also at Crestview Academy, but I don't know if it, it follows on or is about some of the same things, but I'm hoping it gives more closure and maybe we'll see the end of this demon pact or whatever it is. Um, we'll get a more satisfying conclusion. And so that's my hope for Bliss. But I do recommend Rhymes with Witches. Uh, even if you're like an adult and not looking for a teen read, it's one of those teen reads that makes you think about your own teenage experience ab about school. And to be honest, this came out a number of years ago, I think in like the early 2000s. So it's not so modern that you're going to feel like alienated by it. I don't feel like any of the characters in this have smartphones or anything like that. It, it's just... Um, yeah, it came out in 2005. So if you're like me and a 90s baby, then it is going to feel like a lot like your school experience. So I hardly recommend this book. Let me know if you have any other recommendations that are anything like it, because I'm excited for, to read some of these more uh, teeny reads as well as uh, like adult novels as well, because they're shorter. It gives me like a, a nice quick read and I really enjoyed this one. So drop your recommendations in the comments on YouTube. And in the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.